I'm Mrs. Brown, and this is Professor Coda. And today we are going to be reading for you The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by William Kenkwamba. In a small village in Malawi, where people had no money for lights, nightfall came quickly and hurried poor farmers to bed. But for William, the darkness was best for dreaming. He dreamed of building things and taking them apart, like the trucks with bottle cap wheels parked under his bed, and pieces of radios that he'd crack open and wonder, if I can hear the music, then where is the band? His grandpa's tales of magic also whispered in the pitch black of his room. Witch planes passed through the window while ghost dancers twirled around the room as if a hundred men were inside their bodies. At dawn in the fields, William scanned the maze rows for magical beings, then wondered as a truck rumbled past, how does the engine make it go? Pay attention where you throw that hoe, his father shouted. You'll cut off your foot. For all its power over dancers and flying things, magic could not bring the rain. Without water, the sun rose angry each morning and scorched the fields, turning the maize into dust. Without food, Malawi began to starve. Soon, William's father gathered the children and said, From now on, we eat only one meal per day. Make it last. In the evenings, they sat around the lantern and ate their handful, watching hungry people pass like spirits along the roads. Money also disappeared with the rain. But Bonnie, his father said, I am sorry. You will have to drop out of school. Now, William stood on the road and watched the lucky students pass, alone with the monster in his belly and the lump in his throat. For weeks, he sulked under the mango tree until he remembered the library down the road, a gift from the Americans. I love the way this author uses figurative language, like the monster in his belly. It doesn't really mean he has a monster in his belly. It means he's really hungry. He found science books filled with brilliant pictures. With his English dictionary close by, William put together how engines moved those big trucks and how radios pulled their music from the sky. But the greatest picture of all was a machine taller than the tallest tree with blades like fans, like a fan. A giant pinwheel? Something to catch magic? Slowly, he built the sentence. Windmills can produce electricity and pump water. He closed his eyes and saw a windmill outside his home, pulling electricity from the breeze and bringing light to the dark valley. He saw the machine drawing cool water from the ground sending it gushing through the thirsty fields, turning maize tall and green. Even when farmers' prayers for rain went unanswered, the, this windmill was more than a machine. It was a weapon to fight hunger. Magetsi a mefepo, he whispered. I will build electric wind. In the junkyard, pieces appeared like tr rusted treasures in the tall grass a tractor fan, some pipe, and bearings and bolts that required every muscle to remove. Donga, he'd shout to the birds and spiders holding up his prize. But as William dragged his medals home, people called out, this boy is masala. Only crazy people play with trash. After many weeks, William arranged his pieces in the dirt, a broken bicycle, rusted bottle caps, and plastic pipe. Even a small generator that powered